Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Hi, thank you. Okay, great. Happy to hear that. Let's begin. Okay, just give me a second as I get the attendance list. Just a moment. Okay, everybody ready, let's begin. I'm going to call your names. When you hear your name, please let me know. Let's do this. Just a moment. Okay, Adán Iglesias Velázquez. Is Adán Iglesias Velázquez here? Arles Ernesto López. Arles Ernesto López. Baudilio Elenilson Rivera Ramírez. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Am... Okay, thank you. Welcome. Carlos Alberto Santos Reyes. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Carlos Edgardo Cruz González. Carlos Edgardo Cruz González. Cecia Gemima Ortiz Núñez. Cecia Gemima Ortiz Núñez. David Antonio Rosales García. Present teacher. Thank you. Edith Consuelo Represa Toledo. Edith Consuelo Represa Toledo. Enrique Pérez Lemus. Enrique Pérez Lemus. Erika Beatriz Guillén Pineda. Erika Beatriz Guillén Pineda. Ever Enrique Gallegos Mejía. Ever Enrique Gallegos Mejía. Ever Francis Alballero. Presente, teacher. Thank you. Franklin de la O. Ayala Hernández. Franklin de la O. Ayala Hernández. Herbert Aristides Oya Ruiz. Herbert Aristides Oya Ruiz. Iván Alexis Rodríguez Asensio. Iván Alexis Rodríguez Asensio. José Amilcar Reyes Cruz. José Amilcar Reyes Cruz. José Benjamín Gavidia Guevara. Thank you. José Valentín Rivera López. José Valentín Rivera López. Juan Carlos Portillo Arias. Juan, Juan Carlos Portillo Arias. Give me a moment, please. Just a second. Okay. Juan Francisco Arrazábal Calderón. Está conectándose ahorita. Ok, thank you. Karen Yulisa Vázquez de Aparicio. Presente, teacher. Thank you. María de Lourdes Miroslava Mansur Aguilar. María de Lourdes Mansur Aguilar. María Magdalena Cedillos González. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Mauro Orlando Vázquez Segura. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mónica Yvette Merino Arias. Mónica Yvette Merino Arias. Oscar Susana Castellano. Oscar Susana Castellano. Salvador Manrique Hernández Vázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Santos Mauricio Arias Valle. Good evening, present teacher. Good evening. Saúl Ernesto Martínez Portillo. Good evening, teacher. Thank you. Good evening. Wilber Rafaela Rivas Arias. 
Good evening, teacher. Good evening. Hello. Okay, I'm calling the name of those who haven't replied yet. Adán Iglesias Velázquez. Are you here? Adán Iglesias. Arles Ernesto López. Carlos Edgardo Cruz González. Carlos Edgardo Cruz González. Cecia Gemima Ortiz Núñez. Cecia Gemima Ortiz Núñez. Edith Consuelo Represa Toledo. Enrique Pérez Lemus. Erika Beatriz Guillén Pineda. Presente, teacher. Thank you. Ever Enrique Gallegos Mejía. Present, teacher. Thank you. Franklin de la O. Ayala Hernández. Herbert Aristides Oya Ruiz. José Amilca Reyes Cruz. I'm here, teacher. Good evening. Good evening. Siempre solo en audio. Okay. José Valentín Rivera López. I'm here, teacher. Okay, welcome. Juan Carlos Portillo Arias. Presente, teacher, presente. Okay, thank you. Juan Francisco Arrazábal Calderón. María de Lourdes Miroslava Mansur Aguilar. Good evening, teacher. I am Good here. E Good evening. Mónica Ivette Merino Rivas. Oscar Susana Castellano. Okay. All right, let's begin. Everybody, welcome. This is Inglés Principiante Modulo 2, and that's me. Ivan Doñan at your service once again, and this is session 11. Today's June the 7th of 2023. Let's do this. Okay. So, um, a review. Arles, Ernesto, presente. Arles, okay, thank you, Arles. Thank you very much. Arrasabal, presente. Okay, perdón, alguien me dijo por ahí? Arrasabal, presente, que tiene problemas de conexión. Okay, pero si no aparece en la lista conectado, no le puedo tomar la asistencia, aunque esté por ahí cerquita. Quiero ver si está. No, Arrasabal. Arrasabal, ¿cuál es el nombre completo? Juan Francisco. Sí, todavía no aparece conectado, entonces no, no puedo tomarle la asistencia. Esperemos que pueda conectarse pronto. Ok. Sí, Iván Rodríguez, presente, teacher. Está conectado, teacher. Iván Alexis. Está Iván correcto. Alexis, ya está, ya está, ya, ya le tomé la sí, asistencia. Gracias. Sorry, teacher, ya se observa. Ah, Juan Francisco, ahí está, ya lo vi. Sí. Yo creí que me estaban diciendo por alguien más. No me parecía el nombre ahí. Ok. Juan Francisco Arrazabal. Aquí está. Thank you. Ok. Vamos ahí. Ok, everybody. A review. Countable and uncountable nouns. Remember, countable nouns include a, a banana, a carrot, a grape, a strawberry, a tomato, an apple, etc. And uncountable nouns include bread, cereal, juice, milk, rice, water, butter, etc. Ok. All that. So let's uh, review the use of some and any, okay? You use some in affirmative sentences with plural count countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Hello, Cecia. Thank you very much. Okay, so again, you use some in affirmative sentences with plural countable nouns and uncountable nouns, okay? So you say there is some milk in the bottle. Milk is an uncountable noun. So you can use some. There, is, there are, sorry, some oranges in the kitchen. Oranges is a plural countable noun. So you can use some because these two sentences are affirmative. Ambas son afirmativas, ¿verdad? Podemos ocupar some con un nombre, eh, un sustantivo contable plural. Y también se puede utilizar con incontables. Tenemos en el chat por acá, Franklin de lado dice presente. Thank you, Franklin. Okay, now use any in questions and negative sentences with countable and uncountable nouns, okay? You say, is there any milk in the bottle? There aren't any eggs in the refrigerator. So that's a review. 
Now you have to be careful with these nouns, okay? Advice, bread, furniture, information, news, weather, work, etc. There are more. These nouns are usually uncountable. So you can't say A or N. For example, a bread, no, incorrect. An advice, mm -mm. a weather, wrong, etc. And they can't be plural because they are uncountable. So you say advices, mm -mm. incorrect. Furniture, no. Furnitures, I'm sorry. And weathers, no. Okay, you these nouns can't be plural, okay? So some examples here. Can I talk to you? I need some advice. This is correct. If you say, I need an advice, that will be incorrect. I want some bread. This is good. But if you say, I want a bread, this is incorrect, okay? Aunque así digamos en español, decimos, quiero un pan. Okay, en español está bien. But in English, it is incorrect. You don't say, I want a bread. They have some nice furniture in their house. This is correct, okay? But if you say they have some nice furnitures in their house, this is incorrect, so don't use it. Laura has very long hair. This is good, but you don't say very long hairs. That's incorrect. I need some information about hotels in Mexico City. This is good. But if you say I need some informations in plural, this is incorrect. Don't use it. Listen, I have some good news. This is good, this is correct. But if you say, I have a good news, that will be incorrect. Uh, it's nice weather today, this is good, okay? But if you say, it's a nice weather today, that's wrong, that's incorrect. Do you like your job? Yes, but it's hard work, this is correct. But if you say, it's a hard work, that will be incorrect. Now, you have a job. Jobs are countable, you can count them. A person can have one job, two jobs, three jobs, etc. Okay, so uh, I have a new job. This is correct. Quiere decir un nuevo empleo. Okay, I have a new job. And you don't say I have a new work. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre job y work? Que job es un sustantivo contable. Usted puede tener uno o dos trabajos, tres incluso. Okay. Pero work es un sustantivo incontable. No, usted no puede decir, I have one work. No. Okay. You say, I have some work to do. I don't have any work to do. Or you can say, I have a lot of work to do. Okay. But never, I have a work to do. That's incorrect. Okay. So remember, you use some with, uh, you use it in affirmative sentences. Okay, uh, like this, she drinks some coffee in the afternoon. There are some notebooks. And you use any in questions and also in negative sentences, like, is there any water? Are there any cookies? I don't eat any bread. And we did this exercise right here. We're not going to repeat the exercises because we completed them. Okay, now that's the review. Now we continue with this. This is the knowledge check, knowledge check 4.4 in the platform. So instructions, complete the conversations with some or any. Complete la conversación con some or any, ¿verdad? Uh, the store doesn't have any potato salad. Adam says, well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make, blah, blah, blah. But we have the exercise right here. Okay, so we're going to do it here. Es el mismo ejercicio del knowledge check 4.4. Entonces, ¿qué haremos acá? You have to complete the conversation with some or any, okay? So Amanda says, the store doesn't have any potato salad, okay? It's a negative sentence, that's why you say any. And Adam says, well, we have lots of potatoes. Let's make, who knows the answer? ¿Quién me ayuda? Cecia. Sería says, some. Let's make some. Se me va a dormir ahí, Cecia. Bien cómoda ahí. <laughs> okay. Let's make, let's make some. All right. Cool. So, um, what about Amanda? Amanda says, okay, do we have... Uh, who knows this? Baudilio.
the microphone. Annie? Do we have any mayonnaise? Okay, that's correct because it's a question. So do we have any mayonnaise? Mayonnaise is an uncountable noun. So Adam says, no, we need to buy. If you know the answer, raise your hand, please. We need to buy. Okay, Cecia. Hey, some de nuevo. Mm -hmm. That's correct. We need to buy some. Okay, but what is some? Some mayonnaise. Thank you. Amanda says, we need, what do we need? Baudilio. Me pasó solo. Cecia Baudilio. Cecia Baudilio. ¿Y dónde están los demás? Any no. Okay, we need any onions. Mm, are you sure? Are you sure, Baudilia? Ah, no, no, no. Sorry. Uh, uh -huh. We need some onions. Too. We need some onions, okay, because this is a plural countable noun in an affirmative sentence. So we say we need some onions too. Okay, thank you. David Antonio Rosales, next one is yours. Adam says, oh, I don't want any. I don't want any onions. Onion? What? I hate onions. Okay, that is correct. Okay, because this is a negative sentence. Thank you very much. What about the next one? Amanda says. No valgo ni Cecia ni Abaudilio ahorita, lo siento. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Uh huh. ¿Quién me ayuda? María Lourdes. Then let's get some salary. Let's get some celery. That's correct. Do you know the meaning of celery? Look, if you see in the picture, this is celery. I'm going to Apio. zoom in. Apio, okay. I love celery. Celery is good. Okay, so uh, let's get some celery. Okay, good. Uh, Maria Magdalena, okay. The next one. Adam says, no, I don't want. No, I don't want any celery in my potato salad. I don't want any celery in my potato salad. Okay, David Antonio, but... Sound teacher. Okay, can you read the complete sentence? Si me ayuda a leer la oración entera. Uh, no, I don't want any celery in my potato salad, but let's put some apples in it some apples okay but let's apples. put some apples in it and amanda apples. says apples in a potato salad that sounds awful okay so suena horrible Lisa. in reality uh apples combine very well in a potato salad if you have tried that en realidad combina bastante bien <laughs> no parece pero sabe bien las papas y las manzanas so um yeah that's correct very good. It's a bit hot. Let me turn on my fan. Okay, that feels good. There's an insect on my screen. Okay, great. So that is a knowledge check 4.4. Let's continue. So there's a lesson objective right here. Look, by the end of this class, you will learn about common breakfast foods in different countries. Additionally, you will practice a conversation in which illustrates some cultural differences in food. Al finalizar esta clase, ustedes aprenderán sobre alimentos comunes del desayuno en diferentes países. Además, practicarán una conversación a cual ilustra algunas diferencias culturales en la comida. So there's a snapshot, okay? What do you have for breakfast? Remember that, as I've said before, como ya les he contado antes, en vez de utilizar el verbo eat, también se puede utilizar el verbo have. You can have breakfast, you can have lunch, you can have dinner, okay? You can also have a snack. ¿Verdad? Un bocadillo. You can have a snack. That could be something. So uh, let's see the chat. Mónica y Betty se presente. Ok, Mónica, bienvenida. ¿Alguien más que se haya conectado recientemente? ¿Nadie más? Ok. You can have a snack. So the, the question is, what do you have for breakfast? 
Now let's take a look. The US, what is a typical American breakfast? I need a volunteer to read the things that Americans or the food that Americans eat for breakfast. Who can help me? Quien me ayuda a leer la lista de las comidas que consumen los estadounidenses en el desayuno. Baudilio. Egg, mm -hmm. bacon, mm -hmm. us with butter, mm -hmm. orange juice, juice, mm -hmm. juice. coffee, mm -hmm. jam, jelly. Jam or jelly. Okay, very good. Thank you. So you have it right here. Let's zoom in. Eggs. You can see the eggs right here. Fried eggs. You have bacon. What is bacon? Esta palabra está tan utilizada últimamente que la gente ya ni sabe cómo se llama en español. Ok, Cecia. Tocino. El tocino, ¿verdad? Pero la gente últimamente dice, voy a comprar bacon. Ok. <laughs> Así dice la gente últimamente. Así que tocino as a bacon. So toast with butter. This is a toast right here. You can see it with butter, orange juice. Okay. Coffee. All right. There you go. And jam or jelly. You can have strawberry jam or strawberry jelly. It's the same. Okay. So that's a typical American breakfast. There you go. What about the Japanese? What do the Japanese eat for breakfast? What do they have for breakfast? I need a volunteer to read this. Please, un voluntario por acá. David Antonio, then Maria Magdalena, and then, okay. So in Japan, what do people have for breakfast? Fish, fish, rice, mm -hmm. soup, 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 mm -hmm. uh, green tea, y el otro no sé cómo se pronuncia. Pickles. 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 Mm -hmm. Pickles. Yeah, that's right. Look at the Japanese. The Japanese for breakfast, the Japanese have fish, rice, soup, pickles, pepinillos, okay, and green tea. That's a typical Japanese breakfast, okay? You know, in Asian cultures, in la cultura asiática, okay, breakfast and lunch are very similar. Very, very, very similar. Okay, so that's the thing. This is what the Japanese have. And what about Mexico? Okay, what do Mexicans have? Maria Magdalena. The eggs, mm -hmm. bean, mm -hmm. tortillas, mm -hmm. French fruits, mm -hmm. shrimp bread, mm -hmm. coffee with marrow. Okay, Mexicans have eggs, beans, frijoles, right? Tortillas, mm -hmm. fresh fruit, okay, sweet bread, pan dulce tiene, and coffee with milk. Okay, that's it. So uh, there you go. What do you have for breakfast? Check the foods. Okay, Cecia. Y el nuestro, ¿por qué no está? Um, uh, porque es el que me van a decir usted, por eso. Ah. <laughs> okay, Cecia, what do you have for breakfast every day? Uh, pupusas. Okay, pupusas, yeah. Uh, what else? And the, quiero ver, el viernes es día pupusa. Okay. El lunes. Ah, come on, English, English. Ah, perdón. Mm -hmm. uh, Monday. Mm -hmm. I have breakfast uh, Monday, egg, beans, mm -hmm. uh, pan francés. Okay. Coffee, mm -hmm. uh, cream, and mm -hmm. cheese. And cheese, okay. If you want to say pan francés, you can say bread only. Okay, bread. Bread, bread. Mm -hmm. thank you. Very good, okay, good. Um, does anybody have a different breakfast? Paulilio? Bread and coffee. Bread and coffee. Only that? Only that. No eggs? No beans? Um, Sometimes? Sometimes. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, anybody else who wants to share? Alguien que coma algo ligeramente diferente del desayuno? No. 
Nobody? Come on. Okay, then. <laughs> okay, so, well, let's continue then. So, uh, that's what people have for breakfast in different parts of the world. Okay, so uh, that's it. Cecia. ¿Cómo se dice plátano frito? Uh, fried, you can say fried plantain. Mm -hmm. Fried plantain. Okay, gracias. Fried plantain. Okay, yeah, that's very common. Okay, nice. Okay, let's continue. That's some vocabulary for you. Now, there's the conversation. Fish for breakfast? Really? So, I need uh, two volunteers, two ladies, please. Two ladies to read this conversation between Sarah and Kumiko. Okay, who wants to play? Okay, Cecia. And uh, I need another lady to play Kumiko. Who wants to play Kumiko? The Japanese girl. Maria Magdalena is going to be Kumiko. Okay. Uh, let's have breakfast together on Sunday. Okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese breakfast on Sundays. I se comió una palabra. Has a Japanese style. A style. Ah, uh -huh. style breakfast on style Sundays. Style breakfast on Sundays. Mm -hmm. Really? What do you have? We usually have fish, rice, and so. And soup. And soup. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Kumiko. No iré. Oh, fish come on. For. <laughs> fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Sometimes we have a salad too, and we always have green tea. Well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Okay, there you go. Thank you, uh, Ceci and Maria Magdalena. So Sarah says, let's have breakfast together on Sundays. Desayunemos juntas, they said. Let's have breakfast together on Sunday. And Kumiko says, okay, come to my house. My family always has a Japanese style breakfast on Sundays. And Sarah says, really? What do you have? Kumiko says, we usually have fish, rice, and soup. Sarah says, fish for breakfast? That's interesting. Kumiko says, sometimes we have a salad too. And we always have green tea. Sarah says, well, I never eat fish for breakfast, but I like to try new things. Before we continue, do you have any questions about the vocabulary or the pronunciation? ¿Alguna pregunta o duda sobre el vocabulario? ¿Sobre la pronunciación de alguna palabra? ¿Alguna expresión que no esté del todo clara? Nothing. Okay, Wilber. Uh, always, and we always have green tea. We always. Always means siempre. Mm -hmm. Always. We always have green tea. Siempre tomamos té verde. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yeah. No questions. Okay, then we continue. So what do we have? Lesson objective. By the end of this class, you will learn how to use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Por ahí Wilber nos preguntaba, ¿qué es always? Ahorita vamos a estudiar eso. Al final de esta clase aprenderán cómo usar los adverbios de frecuencia cuando hablamos sobre comida. O en general. <laughs> No solo cuando hablamos de comida. So this is the grammar focus. Adverse of frequency. So what do you have? Take a look. You say, I always eat breakfast. Always. You can say, I usually eat breakfast. You can say, I often eat breakfast. 
I sometimes eat breakfast. You can say, I hardly ever eat breakfast. Or, I never eat breakfast. When you have sometimes, you can also say, sometimes I eat breakfast. This is okay. So these are the adverbs of frequency. They indicate frequency. That means how often you do the things, okay? Do you ever have fish, fish for breakfast? Ever. It's like, alguna vez, okay? Alguna vez desayunas pescado. Do you ever have fish for breakfast? You say, yes, I always do. Siempre lo hago. You say, sometimes I do. A veces lo hago. No, I never do. Nunca lo hago. And this is the order of the adverse of frequency. 100% of the times, then you use always, which is siempre. That is 100% of the times. 0% of the times, you have never, nunca. Okay, that's 0% of the times. And then you have always, usually, which is usualmente or normalmente. Often means seguido or con frecuencia. Sometimes means a veces. Hardly ever, casi nunca, okay? And never, which means nunca, okay? But again, this is just some very simple, very short piece of explanation, piece of uh, information that you have right here. I'm going to expand on this right now. So everybody take a look and I'm going to share this with you. No, primero vamos a ver la diapositiva, no voy a hacer que tenga algún error. Okay, adverse of frequency. Now, these words are with the verb in the middle of a sentence. Very important. You use always, usually, often, sometimes. Y fíjense acá, porque aparecen estos dos nuevos. Rarely and seldom. What is rarely and seldom? It's similar to, they are similar to hardly ever. Rarely, seldom, y hardly ever, prácticamente, llevan el mismo significado. ¿Qué significa eso? Casi nunca. Muy rara veces, okay? That's the meaning of rarely. Muy rara veces, casi nunca. The same is seldom, casi nunca. Muy, muy rara veces, okay? And also hardly ever, casi nunca, casi nunca. Basically, rarely, seldom, and hardly ever have the same meaning. And then you have never, nunca. You have some examples. Look, my brother never speaks to me. Mi hermano nunca me habla, okay? can say she's always late like the picture look she's running so she's always late do you often go to restaurants vas a restaurantes con frecuencia do you often go to restaurants i sometimes eat too much or you can say sometimes i eat too much they rarely go camping Rara veces se van de camping o de campamento. Otra palabra que ocupamos bastante, camping. Okay, so they rarely go camping. So look, again, adverse of frequency indicate how often you do things. I'm going to send this to you via WhatsApp. Maria de Lourdes. Thank you, teacher. Um, yo tengo una pregunta. Yes. Con esta palabra, con often, es de la pronunciación. Me da la impresión, o sea, o no sé si estoy escuchando bien, pero este, que no se pronuncia la T, solo la, como que se fuera una doble F. Está, está escuchando bien. Often. La, often. la T es muda. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Normally people don't say often, they say often. Ok, María Magdalena Cedillos González. Teacher, solo para manifestarle que el señor Pérez Lemo dice que tiene problemas de conexión. Híjole. Bueno, vamos a poner acá. Enrique Pérez Lemus. Vamos a poner un comentario. Ok. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, let's continue. 
now uh, the chat says Oscar Susania presente. Okay, thank you, Oscar. Welcome. Okay, take a look. Now, estos adverse of frequency no van nada más así donde caiga, ¿verdad? Hay, hay reglas, se deben utilizar en cierto lugar de la oración. So, adverse of frequency go before the main verb. ¿Dónde van? Van antes del verbo principal. Si usted dice, ¿dónde pongo el adverb of frequency? Identifique el verbo principal. Ah, póngalo antes de esa palabra. So, you say, for example, always go. Often play. Never have, etc. Some examples. I always drink coffee in the morning. Okay. Sandra often goes to Chicago on business. ¿Verdad? Sandra, con frecuencia o seguido, va a Chicago por motivos de negocio. ¿verdad? Okay. You sometimes look unhappy. A veces te ves triste. You sometimes look unhappy. Y vamos a agregar algo acá. Ah, oh, no. Ya está ahí. Lo siento. Al final está. So, they usually have dinner at seven. Normalmente cenan a las siete. They usually have dinner at seven. And we rarely watch TV. Casi nunca vemos la tele. We rarely watch TV. So what can you see here? The adverb frequency comes before the verb. Always drink. Often goes. Sometimes look. Usually have. Rarely watch. Okay? El adverb frequency va antes del verbo principal. Esa es la clave. Fíjese bien. That's the key. However, sin embargo, okay, adverse of frequency go after the verb be. Si es el verb be el que está utilizando, el verbo principal, entonces el adverse of frequency va a ir después, no antes. For example, you say am always, is often, are never. Y esto que tenemos acá es el pasado del verb be, que no lo hemos estudiado aún, pero está bien que lo veamos aquí, ¿verdad? Porque aparecen algunos ejemplos. Was and where es el pasado del verb be. La misma regla aplica. El adverb of frequency va después del verb be. Examples. You say, I am always tired. Siempre estoy cansado. Okay. I am always tired. Que ven acá, es lo contrario a la regla anterior en que el adverb frequency iba antes del verbo. Ahora el adverb frequency va después del verbo. Sí, ese verbo es el verb be. Ok. José Amilcar. Please, teacher. Repeat the pronunciation. Rar, rar, rarely. Rarely. Is, is correct? R rar, rarely. Re repeat, please. Ok. Rarely. Oh. Difficult. Okay. It's a bit difficult. Yeah. I know. Rarely. We rarely watch TV. Rarely. 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 Mm -hmm. Rarely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Rarely. Okay, thank. Mm -hmm. Hablando de eso, no confundan la, no vayan a confundir, ¿verdad? La palabra rare con la palabra en español raro, porque no es exactamente lo mismo. Rare quiere decir que casi nunca ocurre. Mm -hmm. Eso significa rare. No quiere decir extraño, más bien quiere decir de que casi nunca sucede. Por ejemplo, you can say... Uh, uh, you have this. guillain barre syndrome is a rare condition. Okay. Síndrome de Guillain-Barré es una condición médica muy poco frecuente, ¿ok? Sin embargo, le puede dar. A mí me dio, por cierto. <laughs> ok, so you have that. It's a rare condition. Yeah, six years ago. Terrible experience. So, but yeah, it's rare. Ok, according to statistics, one in a hundred thousand people get uh, guillain Barre syndrome. 
Okay. It's a bit, it's very rare. Okay. But sometimes people get it. I got it. Okay. A mí me dio. So that's the meaning of rare. Que casi nunca pasa. Okay. Es, es difícil que suceda. All right. Y de ahí viene el adverb rarely, que es raramente o difícilmente. Okay. O casi nunca. So we rarely watch TV. Okay, so uh, again, right, adverse of frequency go after the verb be. So you say, I am always tired. They are never at home during the day. They are never at home during the day. Nunca están en casa durante el día. It is usually very cold here in the winter. Again, it is usually very cold here in the winter. When I was a child, I was often late for school. Was es el pasado del verb be, ¿verdad? Cuando dice, when I was a child, cuando yo era un niño, seguido llegaba tarde a la escuela. I was often late for school. And they are sometimes late for meetings. Okay? So again, the rule is, adverse of frequency go before the main verb, as in always drink, often goes, sometimes look, usually have, rarely watch. But if you have the verb be, then you have first the verb be and then the adverb frequency. So you say am always, are never, is usually, was often, are sometimes. Okay? Y por último, you can use the adverb sometimes at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. El adverbio. Sometimes es un poco especial porque usted lo puede ocupar a media oración, antes del verbo principal, por supuesto, o después del verbi. Se puede utilizar al principio de la oración como la primera palabra, separada de una coma, o se puede encontrar al final de la oración también, como usted más le guste. So you have, we sometimes have sushi for lunch. Or... Or sometimes we have sushi for lunch. Or we have sushi for lunch sometimes. Which one is correct? The three of them are correct. Las tres son correctas. Pero solo con sometimes, okay? Do you have any questions about this? Alguna duda, consulta, pregunta? Algo que no les haya quedado claro. Paudilio. Quizás me adelantaré un poquito, lo veríamos después, en cuanto a las interrogantes o de forma negativa. La misma regla aplica. Si usted tiene una pregunta eh, o una oración negativa, igual, el adverb frequency va antes del verbo principal. Ok, thank uh -huh. you. Uh -huh. You're welcome. Any other questions? Alguna otra pregunta? No? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Your turn. Read Eric's answers to the questions. Write sentences about Eric with often, never, etc. Now look, she's talking to Eric and she says, do you, mm, permítame, se me fue un, una letra de más. Bueno, hoy sí. Do you ever play tennis? ¿Alguna vez jugas tenis vos? Le dice, do you ever play tennis? And Eric says, yes, often. So the sentence is, Eric often plays tennis. The adverb frequency comes before the main verb. The second one, she's asking, do you get up early? And he says, yes, always. What's the second sentence? Okay, uh, Baudilio. Yes, um, sería, he always get up early. Okay, he always, again? Get up early. Get up early. Okay, very good. But something is something is um, 
Um, um, ¿Qué le puedo decir? Falta una cosita pequeñita ahí. ¿Qué será? Es un detallito tan minúsculo que es una letra nomás lo que nos ha fallado ahí. Who knows the answer? Cecia, Gemima. Eh, no sé, sigamos con otra. Eh, he always get, get up early. Get up. Get up. Get up uh -huh, early. Uh -huh. Gets up early. That's more like it. Okay. <laughs> he always gets up early. Okay. That's, that's it. He always gets. Get. Esto es present simple. Por lo tanto... Recuerden que en oraciones afirmativas, si el sujeto es he, she, o it, entonces el verbo va a variar un poco. ¿Ok? Lleva esa S. He always gets up early. Entonces lo que me había dicho Baudilio estaba súper bien. ¿Ok? Solo que faltaba ese pequeño detalle. Thank you, Cecia. Number three. ¿Ok? Uh, she's asking. Fíjese bien la pregunta. Are you, are you ever late for work? And he says, no. Never. So what do we have here? If you know it, raise your hand, please. Uh huh. Are you ever late for work? And he says, no, never. Ajá. Salvador Hernández. He don't never lay for work. Can you repeat it, please? He don't never lay for work. Mm, no, sorry. It's different. But thank you for participating. ¿Quién nos ayuda? Maria de Lourdes. He is never late for work. He is never late for work. That's correct. He is never late for work. ¿Por qué? Porque la pregunta, si usted se fija, no comienza con do, ni hay un verbo principal después. Comienza con el verb be. Por lo tanto, es el verb be el que estamos usando. Are you... Are you ever late for work? Bless you. And he says, no, never. Okay. He is never late for work. Okay. All right. So what about number five? Do you ever get angry? And he says, sometimes. How about this one? Mm -hmm. She's asking, do you ever get angry? ¿Alguna vez te enojas? And he says, sometimes. A veces sí. So, what do you have? Wilber. Hombre, Dios, ahí, teacher. A ver cómo nos va. Ajá. Uh -huh. Do you ever get angry? I so, I'm sometimes. No, but uh, he. I, I'm he. Okay. He. he. Mm -hmm. 
he sometimes get uh, angry. He, okay, okay. Pero falta ahí una letrita, nos está haciendo falta. He sometimes get gets angry. Angry, correct. Okay, he sometimes gets angry. Como ya lo estudiamos también, puede ser así. Veamos. You say, he sometimes gets angry. You can say, sometimes, comma, he gets angry. And you can say, he gets angry sometimes. Cualquiera de esas tres versiones estaría bueno, porque es sometimes. Okay, so he gets angry sometimes. Sometimes he gets angry and he sometimes gets angry. So good, thank you. Okay, what about the next one? She's asking, do you ever go swimming? ¿Alguna vez vas a nadar? And he says, rarely. Así nunca. Muy difícilmente. Rarely. Who wants to try? Cecia. He is rarely go swimming. Una palabra de más va ahí. He is rarely go swimming. Um, mismo error, va una palabra de más ahí. Espérame. Y... Bueno, pero. Sin el is, no, pero es el to you. Así es. Ajá. Ajá. Entonces es. Ahorita me acaba de decir usted. ¿Y por qué he es? Ah, sí, 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 sí. He rarely goes swimming. Ajá, hoy sí. He rarely goes swimming. Así es. Si no aparece el verb be, no lo ocupemos. Ok. So, <laughs> he rarely goes swimming. Correct. Ok. Muy difícilmente, o rara veces, ok. Eh, va a nadar. Ok, so he rarely goes swimming. And the last one. Oh, thank you, Ceci. The last one. Are you at home in the evenings? And he says, yes, usually. Are you at home in the evening? Uh, yes, Ceci. Sí. Okay. No, perdón, perdón. No, no, no. Yes, no. Okay, no. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Who knows the answer to this? Practicando en voz alta. Es una buena forma de, de estudio también. Oh, hablo en serio. Okay, so um, who can tell me the answer? Waiting. Wilber. Vamos, teacher. Este, are you at home in the evening? He says, yes, usually. He is um, usually in the evening. Ok, muy bien, pero se comió un par de palabras ahí. He is usually... Estoy pensando, por eso no activo el micrófono, Ticha. Dale, dale. He is usually at home in the, in the evening. In the evenings. Yes, he is usually at home in the evenings. Correct. Very good. Okay, nice, everybody. Very nice. Okay, cool. Um, let's see, it's 7.51 already. We only have like five minutes. So um, let's move on. So uh, before we finish, we're going to have a very quick review on this, the grammar focus. Now look, después de ver las reglas con mayor detenimiento, ya el grammar focus tiene un poco más de sentido, ¿verdad? Okay, so you say, I always eat breakfast. I usually eat breakfast. I often eat breakfast. I sometimes eat breakfast. I hardly ever eat breakfast. I never eat breakfast. Alternatively, you can say, sometimes I eat breakfast. And even, I eat breakfast sometimes. Okay? Question. 
Do you ever have fish for breakfast? Cuando ocupamos ever? Ever es un adverb frequency que se utiliza como cuando usted no sabe si la otra persona hace algo o no y si lo hace con qué frecuencia. Ever, alguna vez. No sé si lo haces o no lo haces. ¿Verdad? Y si lo haces, no sé con qué frecuencia lo haces. So, do you ever have fish for breakfast? ¿Alguna vez desayunas pescado? So he says, yes, I always do. Siempre lo hago. Okay, sometimes I do. A veces lo hago. And no, I never do. Nunca lo hago. And remember the order, right? 100% is always. Then you have usually. Usually is like 90%, 85% of the times. Often, I will say 45% of the time. Sometimes 20, 25% of the times. Hardly ever. 5% of the times, never, zero, okay? Always, siempre, usually, usualmente o normalmente, often, seguido, con frecuencia, sometimes, a veces, okay? Ocasionalmente, ¿verdad? Hardly ever, casi nunca, and never, nunca. Okay. Enrique Pérez dice, aunque sea cinco minutos me conecto, dice, okay, bienvenido. <laughs> Vamos a poner acá. Vaya, pero que quede huella que se conectó. Okay, thank you. Speaking of which, uh, let me call the attendance. Antes de continuar, Adán Iglesias Velázquez, are you here? Adán? Adán, no, he's not here. Okay, Carlos Edgardo Cruz González, are you here? Carlos Edgardo Cruz González. Edith Consuelo Represa Toledo. Presente, teacher. Thank you. Herbert Aristides Oya Ruiz. Herbert Aristides Oya. Ok. No se pudo conectar, teacher. No se pudo conectar. Ok, thank you. All right, uh, let's continue. So, again, right? Uh, Adverse of frequency go before the main verb. Van antes, okay? I always drink coffee in the morning. Sandra often goes to Chicago on business. You sometimes look unhappy. They usually have dinner at seven. We rarely watch TV. So always drink, often go, sometimes look, usually have, rarely watch. The adverse of frequency comes before the main verb, okay? However, adverse frequency go after the verb be. Si es el verb be, entonces lo va a colocar después del verb be. I am always tired. They are never at home during the day. It is usually very cold here in the winter. When I was a child, I was often late for school. And they are sometimes late for beatings. Okay, look. First the verb be, then the uh, adverse frequency. Am always, are never is usually, was often, are sometimes. Now you can use the adverb sometimes at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. If it's in the middle, it comes before the main verb or after the verb be. We sometimes have sushi for lunch. You can use it at the beginning. Sometimes we have sushi for lunch. You can use it at the end. We have sushi for lunch sometimes. Recuerde que esto solo sucede con el adverb frequency sometimes. Con los demás no, ¿verdad? Los demás siguen las reglas de una forma más estricta. Sometimes le dan ahí el paso libre. So, uh, that's it. Those are the rules. We completed the exercises. Okay, no, we didn't do this one. Or did we? No. Okay, we're going to complete that one tomorrow. Okay. So, uh, José Amilcar. Sorry, teacher. Me distraje yes. un momento, me llamó. Uh, José Amilcar, que recuerde, ya tomé su asistencia. Sí, ah, ya es que como asistencia. escuché que estaba leyendo de nuevo. Ah, sí, leyendo, eh, llamando a aquellos que no me, no me habían contestado. Ok, sorry. Ok, no problem. Thank you. Ok, you're welcome. Ok. Ok, everybody, uh, we're going to end the class right here. So... Uh, thank you very much. Okay. And uh, 
I will see you tomorrow. Remember, you need to work on the platform. Por favor, no se le vaya a olvidar trabajar en la plataforma. Muy importante que vayan adelantando los ejercicios. Eh, ya para el día de mañana tiene que estar completa la sección número cuatro. Cecia. Ya terminé. Okay, thank you. Okay, congratulations. Very good. Okay, all right. Um, así que, por favor, no se vayan a atrasar con eso. Ya ven que en el grupo de WhatsApp, pues, los administradores están bien pendientes y están diciendo, por favor, trabajemos, por favor, trabajemos. Así que hagámosles caso para no atrasarnos y para, pues, no perder, pues, esta oportunidad que tenemos de aprender inglés, que es técnicamente gratis, <laughs> ¿verdad? So, um, thank you and see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, teacher. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye -bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye.